Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a beautiful sunny day. We're gonna get a lot of work done today, but before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about these awesome boots that Jack sent out. Jack's been like a, uh, well, I've got a few of them, like uncles and aunts, you know, that really kinda look out for me. Um, they sent a lot of messages. They, they um, are just, you know, they're big supporters of mine and um, Jack saw me trudging around in my $15 boots and thought he could do better. So big thank you to Jack, big thank you for the socks that also came with these, and big thank you to you guys who have been hitting up the wish list. I got a few items I want to show you. So this is the circuit panel so far. I've got some thicker wires, some thinner wire. I've got this great big wire over here, which I just left on hooked up to anything, but that's gonna change because Bryce hit up the wish list and sent out a few of these outlets, uh, or I should say inlets. So this is a 30 amp inlet, and I've also got a nice little 110 inlet that I'm also gonna put in. I'll put the 110 one inside here for just small things that I wanna run um, to charge up a battery bank in an emergency, and then I'll put the big one outside for the generator. Eventually I'll also wire a 220 connection uh, I don't know why, but I can, so I'm going to, and uh, we'll figure that out eventually. But in the meantime, I want us to do some sunny day work, so let's get to some sanding. So we got the sanding kind of squared away. Unfortunately, the beam I'm sitting on has got to get out of here before I can finish this. Luckily, the new beam that's going in here is about three and a half inches shorter. So I should have ready access even if I got the new beam in all the way. So I'll just stain and, and varnish up here and uh, hopefully I can blend it nicely down here later on. I just really want to get this done so that I can really do the sickaflex around all the windows so that I could seal this up and every time it rains, this area will stay dry. I'm spreading it not with Folgers, but cedar colored CTEL 1. Stain, varnish, mainly on the outdoor parts, mainly because I want to get sick of flex. That means I also need to put on some primer. So let's do that next. Okay, it's cooling down. I am out of dry surfaces to coat in paint. So we're gonna let that dry off this evening and we'll get back to it tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more sunshine. These days are kind of rare though, so do what we can. All right, well, I don't know where the day went, but um, we got some good work done today, um, including several coats of varnish and stain, and I'm just I'm starting to see the color up front, which is really good. So I'm starting to see a future in which this boat is the color I want it to be, and it stops looking like a barge. It's very soon, very soon, we're getting there. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to Jack and Bear and all my aunts and uncles on through, that I've met through YouTube and Patreon and all you guys have been supporting me a lot. I um, want to give a huge thank you also to everyone who's been hitting the wish list because it's all those like little things a nickel and dime me to death. Um, like the wiring and the terminals and little lights and I mean there's just a lot of stuff. There's just a lot of little damn things and uh, for those of you who are happy to hit that wish list before I put that in the shopping cart, thank you so much and you know it always brightens my day when something shows up I wasn't expecting and it just shows up in the mail and I get to jump into another project. So 
anyways, just wanted to say that I'm thankful. I'm also very cold, so I'm going to get warm. And we're going to start this whole cabal again tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's been kind of cold up here because we don't have any windows in there. Um, time to change that. We're gonna finally put hinges on these things so that uh, I can actually open and close them and then I can actually put seals on them so they actually stop leaking. So I actually have a nice dry home. So first step, let's get some hinges on. window in there but uh, it's come to my attention that this temporary beam here is too tall for the window to open properly so I can't even screw it in properly um, without removing some of this material now luckily this beam is finally gonna be removed in the next little bit so um, it's just being turned into firewood anyway so I'm gonna chop a chunk out of it just enough to do this bit right now and then later on when I have the other beams all sorted away I'll be able to uh, remove it entirely. All right, a little interruption in the hatch at work. Um, I had to move the boat again. So as you can see, I'm now much closer to shore. We have a great big storm coming in tomorrow. They're calling for nearly 100 kilometer an hour winds again, which, uh, well, it shouldn't be a bit as bad as it was last year in December, but it's gonna be a good one. So I got really close to the shore and hopefully I'm sheltered. This is the north side right there, so. Now usually when I have to move the boat, um, I don't really have any motors. So I am literally rowing this boat around, which is a good way for me to figure out how, how quickly and how easily it moves through the water, which is pretty good. She's got some real momentum though. Um, 16,000 pounds does not stop quite as quick as my dinghy does. Um, also, her hulls digging so deep into the water really want to stay going straight. Now, they don't have rudders on them right now, so these hulls just, they pick a direction and they stick to it, so it takes a lot of effort to get it to twist. Also, simultaneously, another reason why I'm so tired, that anchor, so that's a 75 pound dam for Mark II, but there's, there's like three or 400 pounds worth of chain on it. I had to use this block and tackle triple block system here that I've set up just to be able to hoist it and get it out of the mud because once it sets in and that anchor is really hard to get up and then the chain makes it even harder to pull out of the ground so oh sunset and I am exhausted I'm gonna try and do a little bit more sycophlex but we're gonna have dinner soon take honey for a quick walk Honey, where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going for a ride? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Taking honey for a spin. Ready? Come here, honey. 
Come on. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Oh, oh, you did it. You did it. Yeah. You did it. You're so good. All right. Well, uh, I've been working today, but we have one hell of a windstorm going on right now. I'll take you outside, but I'll mute the audio because it's a little overkill on the wind noise. We're dealing with 45 knots consistent right now, and what you see is basically the most sheltered bay in uh, Gabriola. So I hate to see what's happening in other places. I was already over in Silva Bay helping them rescue a boat from the beach. So um, whew, luckily uh, it's not mine today. So. So I've set up three lines up front. I've got a bridle and then a backup line down the center. Unfortunately, I made that backup line a little too tight. So it should be sitting on the bridle and then the backup line is there in case the bridle fails. And I have the main anchor sitting there ready to be dropped. And that's like 400 pounds worth of steel. So that'll hold um, us if everything else fails. Hopefully I'm gonna be up all night. Time to get some work done. Okay, well, the sun has gone down. The wind is still up. This is a, a storm paramount to how it was in December last year. Luckily, I kind of prepared for it and we got the boat on the right spot, but uh, whew, I could tell something's gone wrong because I can see lights all over the far side of the bay. Um, so it's pretty obvious to me that something's gone wrong. I can't see anything over there and I can't do anything about it because I'm basically trapped on this, on this, uh, on this boat. If I get off in that dinghy, I'm not gonna have enough horsepower in my arms to get myself to shore right now uh so i'm a little screwed um hopefully i don't think anything's gonna happen on this boat this boat is locked down and we've got backups ready to go i've already used one of my backup anchors to secure kenny's motorboat but uh hmm so this is the fun part of living on a boat full-time um uh, storms like this happen you don't sleep um, and then they can continue for sometimes several days in a row, up to a week, you know, and you're not getting much sleep. You gotta get sleep whenever you can. So the forecast is saying that it's 50 knots consistent. That feels a little high to me, but um, it's definitely shaking up the boat pretty good. But yeah, I'm looking forward to being on the ground in a few minutes and hopefully that will at least allow me to rest a little bit easier and uh, if not actually sleep, you know? We'll pick this up hopefully tomorrow and I'll give you guys a casualty report. All right, well, Mother Nature, after throwing a temper tantrum last night, has come out all sunshine and rainbows today. <sighs> this dysfunctional relationship I have with Mother Nature is not really my cup of tea, but it's great that we're having decent weather today because I am sailing to Victoria, the capital of British Columbia, right on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. So it's 54 nautical miles. It's a good long haul. And uh, I'm doing this because Trevor is moving his boat, Karen, a 27 foot Catalina, down to a dock there to spend the winter on board while he works at a shipyard. So all sailory stuff, all that's gotta happen today. And uh, it's time to get up there, hoist a sail and ride this Northwest wind. Hard reverse. Thanks here, I don't know if you should go up there. All right, whatever. All right, we're off to a great start. Then what happened, man? <laughs> I think my motor started to sputter. Yeah. And it looked like it was sitting really low in the water. <laughs> Might have been scooping a little bit of water into the intake or something. Um, that's not good. So we turned around and we're gonna go check it out. We checked all the bilges, dry. Haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. All right, we're back on the dock. We've done a lot of the safety inspection from outside the boat. Looks like it's riding nice and high. Once we were sailing, it came really close to this engine well back here. So it might have just been the rolling waves catching us on the stern. I think that's probably it. Um, we've unloaded a bit of weight and shifted the weight around the boat, but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. 
Um, it's not the sea lark after all, this is 27 feet, not 20 feet. And that seven feet makes a lot of difference in boats. we were scared for nothing. The only reason we had any problems is because the amount of wave and swell going on right now. And we were trying to motor. That puts the stern down. Well, this engine, well, at least she's blocked off from the rest of the boat, so it's not like it was gonna swamp us, but when the transom gets buried, so does the motor. It doesn't love that, but you know what we love is downwind sailing on nothing but our jib. We're flying along at a good six to seven knots here, making pretty good time. So hopefully it'll all turn out and we'll get to where we're going. Plenty of time for a cold beer and a hot burger. We are in Victoria, so mission accomplished, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we aren't at the dock we're supposed to be. No. As you can see, sun has set. Um, our running lights are working great, which is good. But uh, these are new waters to both of us. Yeah. So instead of risking the last eight nautical miles, I think, yeah, that's about that, yeah. we're just going to uh, chill out here in Oak Bay for the evening. Yeah. We'll pick this up in the morning after We've been fed, we've been slept, we've been coffeed, we've done all those things, and uh, it'll be, it's nice to be on a dock. I feel yeah. so fancy. I know, right? <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We had a lovely night on the dock. Honey's had a lovely night in here, eh? It's cozy and warm. Went for a little walk this morning in the city, which is kind of a weird, cool experience to be on a boat, but also be in the city. Also, I'm a really big fan of this Catalina. I'm a huge fan of like anything that uses smart design and cheap materials to make something that wasn't accessible to folks, accessible to folks. And the Catalina really does that. I mean, it's, it's not an expensive boat and it's well designed, it's well laid out, it's good kind of jack of all trades and you can get in for this boat with the motor and the mooring was 2400 bucks or something like that. I mean Trevor and Liz have done some great work at like kind of fixing up a few problems with it but um, most of them were just a little bit of neglect and that's it. So a little bit of sick of flex, a little sanding, some fresh coats of varnish. And now Trevor's got a nice little home in Victoria which is really cool. So. We're gonna do a bit more of the sail today, get ourselves around over to West Bay, which will be right close to downtown Victoria. So actually in Victoria proper, not just Oak Bay, but yeah, it's been a fun trip. Uh, 
All right, we've made it. Check this spot out. You notice that looks like we're in a suburban division <laughs> and that's because we're surrounded by float homes. This is one of British Columbia's last live aboard docks. There's not very many of these left. And the cool thing about it is it's got a real community. You know, you're it does, really yeah. lucky to have gotten this spot. Oh, I know, I lucked out hard. It's really hard <laughs> to get these spots, but you're surrounded by other people who live aboard boats, other sailors, um, and also float homes like <laughs> these huge things right next to us. It's so cool, it's so, so cool. And you know, all the facilities are here. You've got the pump out stations already hooked up. You've got water already hooked up. You've got power hooked up, you've got everything. So if you can get into a place like this, and that's a big if, super worth it. Yeah. Super cool. How much are you paying a month, if you don't mind sharing? Uh, 450. 450? 450. 450. But bad. that's based on my length of my sailboat. Yeah. So that's yeah. why, you know, you look at a Catalina 27. Yeah. Nice small little boat. Yeah. Get into this nice little small little slip where no one else can. Yeah. Pay a small amount of money every month. Mm. Save yeah. more money, do more adventures. Absolutely. Good call. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap up today's episode here and head back to the boat. I'll catch you guys next episode back hard at work or something like that. Take care.